Hey everybody, welcome back to the next episode of the Balanced Vibes podcast. Happy 2021! So this is the first episode of this new year, so I'm wishing you a very happy new year and hopefully this year will be absolutely amazing. A lot of it is actually in our hands. I know that sometimes we feel like disempowered, we feel like we cannot do anything about the current situation, but I believe that we can always do something with our inner strength, also our day-to-day -day steps, what are we doing every day, how are we staying strong, how are we staying healthy, all this is in our hands. And whereas like a lot of people can say that 2020 was absolutely a horrible year, I would actually encourage you to think, was it really? Or was there something good? Was there something better than in previous years? And I can tell that for me personally, there was one big word that I would use to describe 2020. I mean, there are a lot of other words too, but one positive word would be awakening. And I don't know about you, but I woke up to a lot of things in 2020 and as painful as they were, as crappy as they were, as much as they hurt, there's growth, uh, growth on the other side of it. We can never grow if we don't go through any discomfort. And I feel like 2020 was a great teacher, uh, at least for me personally, taught a lot of things, taught me to take even more responsibility for my own health. And I hope that you are doing the same thing. And of course, on this podcast, I talk about nutrition, I talk about exercise, but these are not the only things that go into health. And we're gonna get into that in a second. There are so many aspects that impact our well-being and a lot of it, most of it is actually in our whole own hands. So let's not wait that somebody will come and save us and, and do things for us. It's all up to us. Okay, what are the things that we can do on a daily uh, basis to feel better, to have better health, stronger health, both physical and mental health. So think about it for 2021. I think health is going to be the big word for 2021. So think, how can I improve my health? What are the things that I can do to feel really empowered so that I don't have to wait for somebody to come and save me and help me? But what are the things that I can do on a very personal level? Because everything starts on a very personal level and everything starts actually uh, inside. So the way we think, the, the way the things we believe, the things we trust, it's all actually uh, under our control. So think about it and make this 2021 really healthy year for yourself. Okay, so today's topic is going to be a mix of different uh, topics and some of the, the things we're going to talk about are um, were born like in our conversations with my clients. Some of the things are just my thoughts based on you know what I see happening on social media, the conversations with just like friends and family members and so on. So it's a little bit of like a mix of, of different things um, and I hope that you will find it useful. So let's first uh, start uh, with something that, um, actually a conversation that I had yesterday with one of my new clients. So. This month, January, I uh, started a new program, a macro accelerator, and I enrolled 11 wonderful ladies into this program, and we are doing the first calls with them already, and it's going great. Um, but one of the clients uh, told me that she has experience with some, uh, you know, with a, with a nutrition coach who had her track macros, but it was not the best experience because she felt like there was absolutely no communication. Uh, there were no check-ins, uh, no questions asked about her health, how she's doing, how she's feeling and so on. And to me, this is really, really important. I want to really know how my clients are doing so that it doesn't only uh, become like, I'm sending you numbers and you're sending me numbers back. I'm sending you numbers, how many macros you eat and you're sending me back how much you weigh. This is not the, the way of, the way real coaching should really look like because when we do just that we are not taking into account everything else that goes into health because numbers only are not your health okay but the way that this new client described me her previous uh, coaching experience was this so basically the, the coach sent her every week numbers and they were 100 calories less every single week minus 100, minus 100, minus 100, minus 100. And how low can you go with this? This is going to be dangerously low. At the same time, the protein kept going up and up and up. So they took down the calories all the time, they increased the protein all the time. And of course you already know, probably if you've been listening for this podcast for a while, that yes, high protein diet is an important thing, but you also probably know, if you know, if you have been listening for a little while is that going too low calories is, can be extremely dangerous for someone's health. Some people respond absolutely terrible, others are affected a little bit less, but in any ways, 
if uh, the calories drop too low and especially when they are decreased by 100 every single week we are quickly hitting the point where we are eating less than our BMR our basal metabolic rate and this is exactly what happened to this woman too she said that at one point uh, I was supposed to eat 1300 calories a day and didn't feel good didn't feel right I couldn't do this and she even told me that, you know what, now that we're doing this thing with you, um, I just got to tell you that 1400 is where I feel really hungry and I don't think I can do it. And honestly, you don't have to do this and I don't want you to do this. So if your basal metabolic rate, which is something that you can, by the way, just go and calculate uh, on the Internet. If your basal met metabolic rate is like for this woman, it was like about 1450 or something and her calories were taken down to 1300, then this is extremely low. And this is where, where we're getting some pushback from our metabolism. So we can try whatever we want. We can, you know, in initially we will lose weight when we go to 1300 and then 1200, 1100, but this is not gonna last forever. And this is where the weight starts coming back on. Um, we start getting this uh, fat gain around our midsection and we're thinking, okay, can I eat even less? Like it's not impossible I cannot do more workouts I cannot eat less like how the hell is this supposed to work and the truth is that it's not supposed to work and it's not working so that's why you should never eat less than your BMR and the other part of this conversation is is that there was absolutely no communication between the coach and the client um, the, the coach never asks how are you feeling how is your hunger how are your cravings how is your mood how is your sleep how is your energy level what were your workouts like um, did you have energy for them were you able to finish your workouts or did, were you so exhausted that you exhausted that you had to quit halfway through so these are all the conversations that need to be had because this gives us an idea of what we need to adjust so for example if a client tells me like uh, week after week that she's you know feeling too full or too hungry we have to adjust that um, if the client tells me that the sleep has gone really really bad we have to do something we have to see if the sleep hygiene is on point if the sleep routine is in point if there is any you know nighttime routine what are the things that we can change are are we staring at our screens like all the time or like fall asleep scrolling instagram there are things that need to be addressed because it's not only about numbers. It's not only about getting the macros 100% right. It's not only about getting the workouts perfect. It's not just that. There are so many things that go into your health and well-being uh, that need to be addressed too. And that's why I'm having 30 minute calls every single week with all of my clients. Um, with some of them, we may do them bi-weekly. Those who are busier, they just don't have time for this, but then we do an email check-in, check in. but there has to be a communication because how do we then know that things are working? And I know that a lot of women are very, very type A. They just think like, okay, I have a plan. I have to stick with it. I'm not supposed to say if things don't feel right because the problem is me, right? I just have to do it better. I have to do it harder. And that's not always the case. Uh, if you're somebody who doesn't speak up, I don't even know that you're struggling. And then we're probably not on the right path and your results are not going to be as good as they should be. Otherwise, uh, they're going to take longer or you're just going to hit a plateau or you're just going to not continue because you feel so maybe tired, so exhausted, maybe super hungry and you just blame yourself. You're just saying that oh, I just should be trying harder. And of course, if your coach also tells you that it's all your fault, um, the numbers are not wrong, the workouts are not wrong, it's just about you, then it's going to make you feel even worse. So I really encourage you, whoever you're working with, just have these conversations and, and know that you have the right to have these these conversations with your coach. And of course, unless it's a, it's like a program where it's a deal right from the beginning, beginning like, okay, here's the numbers, go do it. I guess that's what you signed up for, okay, but uh, I really encourage you to to um, find a person who you can, um, you know, exchange ideas and, and share experience, share your experience every single week, be week because it's so important to keep an eye on, on your progress, to keep an eye on your health, because the whole goal, whole goal with all this is to make sure that your health also stays good. Yes, busy goals are perfectly fine. I think they're great, but also you should be healthy throughout this process and not feel like crap and not feel like you're you're failing and you can't do this and so on. And one one more thing I want to mention uh, with uh, the new program that I'm doing right now, Macro Accelerator. So 
I enrolled 11 amazing women in there. And I got to say that about half of them actually have to do a reverse diet because they have been in such low calories that there's nowhere to cut anymore. So if they're already eating 1300, but their basal metabolic rate is 1500, then we just cannot cut their calories anymore. And we have to do the opposite thing. We have to bring the calories back up uh, to their maintenance level. Then we have to eat at maintenance at least for 12 weeks and sometimes even more. And then we can start cutting a little bit. So it's a very, very common, common thing, unfortunately, and cutting more calories is not the solution. And you have to talk about this with your coach. Otherwise, things are not going to go that well. All right. Speaking of health, okay, what's another part of really healthy lifestyle other than eating eating well and eating eating good and uh, meeting your nutri nutrition nutritional needs um, is rest days. And um, you probably know that rest days are important, but my question is, are you actually taking them? And what I see a lot of women struggle with is like having so much guilt and shame around taking rest days, feeling like I'm doing this wrong. I shouldn't be resting. And this message is kind of like, it's, it's, it's like somebody's like in your head all the time telling you that this is wrong. Don't rest, move more, move more, do another workout. So I see a lot of times where women are doing like four or five strength workouts, like heavy, heavy, heavy lifting, and they do four or five high intensity orange theory classes on top of that. You don't have to do that much. And if you um, have already symptoms like adrenal fatigue, or maybe you have, for example, Hashimoto's, then no, definitely you should not be doing that much. You have to cut your hit training down a lot. You should focus on heavy lifting. And sometimes if you're so, uh, your adrenal fatigue is so bad that you just, you're so exhausted all the time, then you're not gonna work out at all. But you have to you have to take rest days before things get to the point where all this becomes necessary. So um, the same thing, of course, with hypothalamic amenorrhea. Had we taken rest days earlier, had we built them into our routine, had we listened to our bodies more when they told us that they need rest, then we would not be in the place where we have to take five months off. That's exactly exactly what happened to me. I had to take five months off from exercise to recover from hypothalamic amenorrhea. Of course, I did some um, I did some yoga, yes, but other than that, almost five months, I didn't do anything. I was just so burnt out and so exhausted, so tired. But had I done this before, had I not worked out six days a week, high intensity lifting, hits, running, all that stuff, had I done just four, had I cut this in half, what would the results be? I probably would have had healthier body and I wouldn't have never had had to take five months off from exercise. So take your rest days and tell yourself it's perfectly fine. We gotta let go of this idea that you have to push more all the time because it's it becomes counterproductive. Too much of a good thing can actually make you more inflamed, can um, cause you all kinds of issues. Uh, overtraining, of course, your body's not responding anymore. All you get out of this is, is feeling continuously, constantly fatigued, uh, tired, in a bad mood. You learn to hate exercise and I don't want this for you. I want you to actually look forward to your rest days and appreciate them as much as you appreciate your workout days and really enjoy it. You know, you're like, okay, I'm going to go for a walk. For example, I always walk on my rest days. This is, this is my rest day. Some people may say that it's not a rest day, but for me, this is a rest day. I like to stay in motion. I like to move. I like to walk outside as much as possible. And I just walk and I look forward to it. I, I look forward to just like chilling, maybe listen to a podcast, maybe talk to my fro uh, my friends, whatever it is, maybe sometimes not listen to anything and really enjoying, like helping my body to recover, knowing that this is the good thing for my body uh, to do because it's not only pushing that's good to do. Also, resting is really, really important. We also have to think about the overall stress that we are experiencing and, and kind of cycle uh, through like harder workout weeks and lighter workouts weeks. So, so for example, when you know that you have a difficult uh, period at work coming up, super intense, a lot of work to do, um, you know, meeting a lot of people, having a lot of phone calls, like a lot of stuff on your schedule, then maybe don't put too, so many workouts on that on that week. Take it easier. Tell yourself, okay, three work three three workouts this week is gonna be plenty. I'm just gonna do them the rest of the time. I'm just gonna do whatever I can to reduce my cortisol, bring down my stress hormones, and just uh, relax. And walking is great for that. Uh, nothing really works quite as well when, when it comes to exercise. Yes, yoga maybe too, walking and yoga. But other than that, uh, give yourself this freedom to do a little bit less because it's not, the stress doesn't only come from work or only from workouts or only from whatever. It's usually a, a combination of all these stressors that at one point just become so heavy that we just, we just crumble and we don't want that. 
right? So build some rest days into your routine, uh, take it easy, enjoy them and look forward to them. Start looking forward to your long walks and, and enjoy them. Okay, and then one more thing um, uh, that I want to talk about today is relationships. Relationships is also really, really important part of our health. And I know this last year was really, really difficult. We we're probably not able to, um, to you know, hang out with people that are, that we love and do all the things that we usually did. And that probably has taught us to us to um, appreciate our relationships even more. And having having good social um, connections and relationships is very, very important for us as human beings. I mean, we are social creatures, and and some of those, uh, if you've heard about blue zones, these are the areas in the world where people live the longest lives. So one thing that's common to those people in those uh, blue zones who live like 100 plus years is that they have very strong social connections, okay? So um, think about how can you strengthen them, strengthen them and start also thinking, is your health and fitness and your diet and, and exercise goals, are those getting on the way of you building those social connections or taking care of your, your relationships? Because I, I have seen this a lot where we let the um, the workouts and diet become so important that we don't pay any attention to our social life anymore. We start turning down invitations. We're not going anywhere with other people. Uh, I know for me, it was like, oh my goodness, if I go out with this person, then I'm going to miss my perfect meal time and I'm going to miss my perfect meal. And I don't know, what if, what if I end up eating something else that was outside of my plan? What if I end up drinking a glass of wine that wasn't part of my plan? What if I end up staying up late? What if I'm so tired that I can't run the next day? All these thoughts. And these were the reasons why I said no all the time and I started dreading going out with people. Um, I also had like a lot of like low self-esteem issues. I was thinking that, you know, I'm like poor, boring company. Nobody actually wants to go out with me. Or if somebody helped, uh, asked me to go out, I was like, oh, they just feel bad for me because I'm just, I'm so alone all the time. And I told myself these things. I'm, I'm a boring person. I, I get bored with other people all the time. So I would always just go home. Like if somebody is like after work, um, you know, when I lived back in Finland, they'll be like, hey, let's go out. Let's have a drink. Let's do this and that. I'm like, no, nah, I can't. I got to go home. And what, what did I do there? I was eating my perfect meals, which was like dry spaghetti or oatmeal, <laughs> oatmeal. And then I would do my perfect workouts. I would just be alone most of the time. And this, this was just my safe zone. I didn't want to get outside of my safe, safe zone. And honestly, this was also the time in my life when I was probably most depressed. And part of it was because I was so, so tight, uh, you know, like with my strict with my workouts, with my diet. I didn't go out. I didn't take care of my mindset. I didn't take care of my relationships. And this is not what I want for you. I want you to have good relationships and and you can combine your healthy eating habits and having, you know, physique goals or health goals and, and performance goals. You can combine those with having strong social uh, relations, uh, social connections and good relationships. It's not just one or the other. It's not that you cannot uh, track your macros and hang out with people. It's not that uh, you have to eat like a pig if you want to go out with people. It's not that you can combine all these things. And that's why perfectionism is such a dangerous thing. Because if we are perfectionists, we think that I can only do this this thing and has to be 100% perfect. Therefore, I got to say no to this other thing. And you know, if you always say no to like hangouts, um, then you will not be asked out anymore. And then one point you find yourself being super lonely and super depressed and super sad because you have always put your diet and your exercise first. And all of a sudden you have even nobody to, to talk to. And, and it may seem like, ah, oh, yeah, it's not going to happen. But actually I can tell you, like for me, this was like, it was like that for many, uh, many years I had maybe just you know, a couple of people that I, that I really talked to because I was so hyper-focused and like so obsessed with food and exercise and I'm not anymore. And now actually I'm really, really looking forward to, uh, you know, hanging out with people. And I know that even if I'm not perfect all the time, if I can't eat perfect all the time, it's going to be fine because I'm going to have a really, really good time. So that's another thing I want you to appreciate and take care of in 2021. This is really, really important. So take care of your health, your physical health, your mental health, your, your friendships and your social connections. So a little bit of all over the place uh, podcast today, but I hope you got something to think about and that is helpful for you. I will talk to you again very soon. Happy New Year and see you again. Bye-bye.